TV. This is take number probably three. <laughs> I want to do other YouTubers have the same situation when they go to record that they find themselves having to do several takes, which is why I don't like live, goddamn, because I can't control what's going on. If this would have been live, y'all would have had heard my damn smoke alarm go off in there because my my uh my daughter is in there fixing some damn hallway hamburgers. <laughs> it just set the damn alarm off. Y'all would have heard all that through the video. Thank God this was not live. I told y'all, I don't like this shit. I like to be in control of the atmosphere. And so, you know, yeah. Anyway, I, I just cut the camera on and went to talking. Well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika. Um, for those of y'all who new to my channel, welcome, 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 welcome. Sweet things, sweet, 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 sweet love things. Welcome to the channel, honey. I hope you come. I hope you enjoy. Um... Ain't no, ain't no good and glamour over here, bitch. I'm a regular bitch doing regular things. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be above basic bitch, though, at all times. Anyway, I wanted to come in and talk to y'all today. I've been pondering this here in my spirit since yesterday. I started to come down and through and talk with y'all last night, but then I got caught up in that walking dead, and I just, after that went out, you know, life after car just ain't going to be good for me over there on the walking dead. I, I'm not, you know, going to be all right with none of this because it look like, um, it look like Rick going to go against the very thing that Carl wanted, which was for him and Negan to make peace. Wasn't that some stupid ass dialogue of them in that damn, when he was in the field and he, Rick was in the field after they had buried, uh, Carl, he hits up Negan on the walkie talkie and they had this exchange. But I tell you one thing, I did see a human side of, of Negan in that moment. And even though, you know, he gave us a, 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 compa a passionate moment where you could tell that hearing that Carl had passed away really did affect him. He still ain't shit because that's the same person that killed Abraham and Glenn. And ain't no forgiveness over him, this team. And Carl wouldn't have been dead neither if he wouldn't have been so hard-headed and not listening to his daddy trying to help somebody. Sometimes you can't help everybody. But that ain't what we come here to talk about. I told y'all I strays, okay? If you please understand that don't get tangled and twisted when you see that damn title down there because I strays, bitch. I do that. I have a regular conversation as if you are not on this camera but sitting right here in my home and we, we running it for a minute, so I strays. Well, forgive me. If you can't handle it, then I don't know what to tell you, but that that's how I do. I stray. See, I was over there on The Walking Dead. I don't even review that show, but that was something I wanted to talk about, and I did. So now let's move back over to Miss Iyana. As I said, many of y'all have asked me before about reviewing Iyana Fix My Life, and I, I most basically tell y'all I don't be watching her like that, or I don't want to, you know, I don't feel like that's a show that I would be able to bring much insight to, and uh, I just didn't want to do it. And it's because true, most of the times on on when she come on on Saturdays, see I have a life, and just because I you know I'm of a certain age now, don't mean that I don't be living it. So I be liking my Saturdays, you know, because you never know when I might want to pop pussy in the club for a real nigga with no cameras rolling. That do happen sometimes. Sometimes I feel like just, you know, going down to the casino and, and you know, making my next move my best move, even though sometimes it don't come out that way. I try it, you know. So I don't watch her like that. Then I had a problem with I don't I have a problem with any of these shows, especially when they get these so called trained people to come in and you you basically pour out some of the most painful moments in your life to these people and into me, even though some people walk away with a resolution to me, that's a form of exploitation, even though they sign up for that, I still feel like that's exploiting people personals, and some things don't need to be on TV, so I never really cared much for uh, watching Eon, I wouldn't, like, she wouldn't, she ain't set on the DVR, okay, so if I miss her, I miss her, if I catch her, I catch her, but I did catch her season five premiere um, this past Saturday, and it, it had put me in a, a wide range of feelings. And I'm, I'm going to try my best here to see if this semester and a half of schooling, along with what my common sense know to be real, and 
you know, all it together, am I going to be able to convey how I'm really feeling about this episode? Because it's going to fluctuate, y'all. I'm still having very, very, very many mixed emotions about this. So let me just preface this before I begin. I'm still a work in progress, and I'm still um, dealing with some, you know, with what I watched. I'm processing it still. So my, my emotions are in and out. But I wanted to share it with y'all because I felt like, you know, this was a very powerful episode. Some said that she didn't she didn't mission accomplish on this one. I would tend to disagree because out of all the few episodes that I have seen of her and clips on YouTube and stuff and, you know, various times she's had different people on there and it made, you know, it kind of was in the blogs or on someone did a YouTube video or it was on the own uh, YouTube TV, you know, YouTube channel and I happened to have caught it, you know. I, I always feel like sometimes she don't, well, I always feel like most of the time, she don't really resolve your issues, but what she does is she make you aware of what your issues are. And when once you become aware, then you can be held responsible. I do believe she said as much uh, on one of her videos since this um, this episode aired with Kamaya uh, Mobley. Now, for those of you who may not know, let me start at the beginning. This past Saturday on her premiere, uh, her season premiere, season five, she had on this girl by the name of Kamaya Mobley, okay? This young girl was um, abducted from the hospital, from her mother, somewhere between five to eight hours after she was born. They never found her up until 19, 18, 19 years later. Uh, she had been stolen by a woman who recently suffered a miscarriage. So the woman put on um, nursing fatigue, went into the hospital, uh, pretended to work there, even had a conversation with Kamaya Mama, um, and then ended up taking the baby. She's assuming the baby's going to the nursery. The woman left the hospital with the baby and raised her for the last 18, 19 years as her own. Um, from what I understand, it came out within the last two years that she had actually been abducted and raised by her abductor as her mother when she went to look for some paperwork she needed for uh, either schooling or a job or something like that. Her mother had no birth certificate, no social security, no numbers or nothing. She just basically stole this woman's child and she raised her as her own. That right there in itself, that's a lot, you know. You've gone your whole life thinking that you are the daughter of this woman who you have bonded with and has become, have come to know as mother. And now this woman has. You found out that your whole life has been a lie. Now enters your, your biological parents. And things ain't perfect between you and the biological mother, but you and the biological father seems to do pretty well with each other. At least y'all putting forth effort. So that brings us to the uh, the Ayana Mansion, okay? So we in there. And upon first seeing Kamaya and, and watching her, how she was so, you know, she was so demure. She had such soft-spoken, you know, she was soft-spoken. She just, you know, not a care in the world. Oh, like she was just processing all of this that has happened in her life in the last two years with ease. It was no problem. I immediately knew that that little girl was going through a lot. And that young woman, I won't call her little girl. I knew then that it was a problem with her and that it was uh, it was going to come out some kind of way before they left that house, okay? Um, I saw Ayana as she attempted to do different exercises as most, you know, uh, psychologists, relationship experts, all of them, they all use different uh, types of techniques that they learn that can kind of build you, you know, build your skills up to be able to express how you feel about a certain situation. I was bothered in my spirit when I saw how, I'll, you have you ever been around people who act like they want the help, but when they actually have to start putting in real work and being honest and, and, and opening up things about themselves that they may not necessarily feel comfortable doing, that they will try to somehow, you know, 
fake it till you make it. That's what I saw the boyfriend and the dad that was there. The mother never came. That opened up a whole bunch of uh, questions for me as well because to my understanding, the mother is the one who had initially contacted Ayana and wanted to come on the show. So why all of a sudden now she don't want to be on the show, that raised the red flag for me too. Second red flag was this girl is way too calm to have such such chaos have just come into her life. Her life basically got interrupted. It was like she found out the last 18 years of her life has been a lie because she's been living with a woman whom she thought had given birth to her, and she hadn't. So just think about how many lies had been told to this girl throughout the course of 18 years. Those of you out here who are a mother, or, you know, just in general, you ain't even got to be no mom. But most of the time, the mother talks about things this child did. You know, I've talked about on here, you know, how I felt having twins inside of me. And how when I got the the, uh, the, uh, the confirmation that it was two of them floating around up in there, my ass went into labor early. Because that just shocked me, baby. That blood pressure went up and I had them babies. You hear what I'm saying? But, nevertheless... We all talk, we reminisce. So, when she was reminiscing about her life, say, during her pregnancy, I, I say pregnancy because I don't know how you do it in your life, but every woman that I have ever encountered, and we got cool, we, we discussed something about our pregnancy at some point in time. Something come up and make that shit come up. So, how that conversation, what kind of lies was she telling this girl? You know, when she was telling her where some of her characteristics, like maybe holding her head to the side. Like, I know I get this from my daddy. He do this shit all the time on that ass. And you'll think he, he you know, got an attitude, but now that's just his little movement. And, and it is with me, too. It don't mean when I tilt it to the side that I think I'm thinking anything negative. I just, I'm, I'm processing now. When you, when, you, when you catch me tilting like this, bitch, I'm processing, okay? So... What was she telling this girl for 18 years? Mom, where I get my attitude from? Mom, where I get my ass from? You know, that's the kind of shit that was going on inside my mind. And I'm trying not to hold y'all long, but they might run long because I got a lot of shit to say. So, pardon me. I ain't seen y'all ass in three days and you ain't seen me. So, let's love on each other for a couple of minutes, okay? Now... <sighs> Y'all, I got a problem with. <laughs> I had a problem with how the father seemed to not want to be involved in the process of starting to heal from all of this, accepting what has happened, and how do we heal from this point? I kind of, a part of me feels like maybe they shouldn't have did this. This girl, first of all, when she, when, when all this hit the fan and this girl found out that she had been raised by someone who wasn't her biological mother and she wanted to be with her biological family or have a relationship with them at that point, why we didn't get her into counseling immediately? I don't understand why we didn't get, because clearly she, <laughs> What we saw at the end of that episode, that ain't the first time. That ain't the first time. I knew it was coming. I did. If you go back to that episode, when she was sitting on that couch and she kept rubbing that arm of that couch and she kept trying to... To me, that was a, a mechanism uh, that she was using to keep herself calm. When she would close her eyes and... She was trying not to go off when Ayana was saying to her that her mother, the one that she knew as her mother, was her actual kidnapper. She didn't want to hear nothing negative about that lady because it's a bond there. And I wondered throughout the course of this show when we saw that the mother was, the biological mama was there. Is it because the biological mama and Kamaya don't see eye to eye because, see, I'm sure to... Her mom, her biological mom, the kidnapped mom, ain't shit. She don't want nothing good to happen to this woman and she wanted to be in jail probably for the rest of her life because you took my life. You took a part of me and you, you took it and assumed it as your own, thus leaving me to feel the pain for the last 18 years of knowing I got a child out there and I don't know if my child is dead or alive. All I know is somebody took my baby. 
Kamaya can't see that. When she see this woman, yeah, I, I hear you saying she kidnapped me, but this is my mama. I love her. I bonded with her. Whether we had a good life or a bad life, this is the woman that I have known as my mother. So how am I supposed to detach from this woman just because y'all telling me she stole me when I was a couple of hours older? Then there's a side of Kamaya that's like, how? why would you take me away from my family when I just was entering this earth? You took it upon yourself because you was in pain to try to alleviate your pain, but you caused pain on my mama, my biological mama, and now it's pain on me because now I know this, and I got a bond with you, so I can't kick your ass to the curb like I might want to if I was thinking in my right mind. You see how complex that shit is? It's very complex, and that's the reason why I'm having such mixed emotions about it. I can't get mad at Ayana for doing this interview or doing this so-called intervention, trying to feed somebody's life because that's what she do. This is what she get paid to do. Do I think Les, uh, Les said it was a disaster? No, I don't. Because it to me, it made me kind of have a better respect for Iyana because Iyana name of her show is Fix My Life. But we know that in reality, we can't always fix people. You know folks be broken as hell and they just refuse to do the work to fix themselves because change starts within you as a person. It doesn't start with somebody bringing you on a TV show. It's, it, you got to feel like you want to get to the bottom of what's causing you to feel whatever it is that you're feeling in that moment. You, you need to want to do that for yourself and... I feel like what Iyana showed us last night was a realistic depiction, well, night before last, a really realistic depiction of a person who just not ready. And that's what I feel like Kamaya is. I'm worried for her because she went from zero to a hundred real quick. And it really wasn't nothing to go off about, but she went off real fast. All she said to her, Iyana said was, I have given your parents an assignment. I have one for you, if you want to do it. Your assignment is to stay here tonight. And your parents' assignment is, if you decide to stay here tonight, not to answer your call, your phone calls to them for one night. Keep in mind, the whole time, she telling this girl, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. This girl didn't even hear that. All she felt like was Iyana was taking some from her again. And I wonder did that come from the fact that she was t her whole life basically was taken from her when her a kidnap mama took her and built the life up with with her as her daughter. Do you feel like she? Do she feel like she that was taken from her? Or do she feel like? she missed something or do she care see what i'm saying it's it's just so much out it's so much and i know i'm all over the damn place and i'm hoping that you can kind of understand a little bit of what i'm saying because i know i'm here and there but it just was so heavy on my mind and it, it had me boggle all weekend after i saw that i just wanted to come in and talk about it a little bit because that girl she do need help. She needs to have help because she can't process this. And instead of helping her, I kind of feel like her biological family, especially the dad, is he enabling her. Because remember, he did tell Ayana, I don't think, or uh, Iana, however to pronounce her name, Iana. Um, she did say that he did say he didn't think it was a good idea to try to try that exercise on her. But before they did the exercise itself and going to tell the girl that she was gonna spend the night if she would like to and her parents were not gonna be there, uh they didn't never when they were supposed to been put like on that little um thing that, that exercise they did where they they put down certain things about who she was and her personality. Not one time did anybody say this girl got a tendency to go from a zero to a hundred real quick. 
Yana had no idea that girl had them type of violent tendencies the way she did. And I was kind of mad because you... She didn't tell you you had to go. You, I mean, you had to stay. You had the option of coming and going. Why was that? Why did you go so crazy on that lady like that? And that was just disrespectful the way she jumped all up in her face. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I understand when a person going through something, we kind of give them a little leeway because you want them to get it out. But I wasn't seeing getting out no anger here. I didn't see no healing coming from this situation. I saw a little girl who liked things to go her way. She done figured out these motherfuckers did me wrong. And everybody gonna pay until I feel like I'm alright. And I could be wrong, y'all. I'm telling you, I could be wrong. I'm not an authoritative voice on this. This is just one listen, one viewer sharing her ideas on the platform that I just happen to have. I feel like she took it too damn far. And then I saw um, um, on Layla Lynn channel that the the dad had said that her son, Iyana's son, had told old girl that he had threatened to beat her ass and she cussed his mama again. That's a natural instinct. Now, did that happen? Yes or no? I don't know. I wasn't there at the filming, okay? But I can understand that. Now, was he going to do any of that? I'm sure not. But think about it. If that was your mama... On her job, and you there, you work with them, and you got a girl that then jumped in your mama face not once, not twice, not three times, but several times, and threatened to put her up to slap the shit out your mama, call her everything but Miss Van Zandt, and you supposed to be able to just stay there in that moment because you. If he says that, I totally understand why he said it, but I don't think that that was the right thing to say. So I'm not going to hold that against him because ain't nobody going to sit there and just let you do their mama in their face. No, no. And they, I feel like they kind of set Ayana up because they knew this girl had a tendency to do this. Did you hear her when she kept saying to her father, you never told me that this person is here. He even tried to say, I ain't never seen this side of her. Nah, bruh, y'all done seen this side of her before. Y'all handled it way too well for you not to have seen this side of this girl before. Now, do I think that Ayana should have continued to try to work with them? Hell no. I mean, I don't know what her background is, but I can tell you this. I don't think she was prepared for something like this. This is a case that I think, honestly, need to go to somebody with a little bit more maybe training and schooling about this. I, that's just what I think. I don't think she was wrong for ending it like she did. I know she did reach out to them. They didn't reach about, back to her. So, you know, maybe in two or three years, maybe she will go back and try to talk to this girl again and see if maybe she, she realized maybe by watching herself on TV how fucked up she is and how much she really need to go have a conversation with somebody that's going to be able to know how to peel her ass back with and, and still know how to control it as they peel it. They, they, they know how to do that. She is an onion. She has to be peeled layer by layer. Till she gets to the, the the core of it. And that's where her happiness going to really lie. Is in their core. But is she going to allow anybody to peel back the layers? That's the question. Ayana tried. By showing this on national TV. She gave this girl a chance to see. How far off she really is. From truly being okay about finding out. 18 years into her life. That her whole life done been a lie. Now I feel bad for her. But I also feel like her, her biological parents. Is going to enable this behavior. Because they don't want no problems. At least the dad. I don't know too much about the mama. Now I did see a clip. That one of my people sent me about a Facebook live that the dad did during the uh, airing of the show. He said a lot of stuff was cut out. He, you know, basically he tried to make it look like they had been done so bad by Iana and her staff. And I don't believe that. I don't believe that. My question to them and my question I ask now to you all. What's the purpose of going on, Iana? Fix my damn life. If you're not willing to open up and visit that painful place in your life that you need to be healed from. What's the purpose of that? 
Now, I don't know if they get paid to come on this show or not. I really don't care. But I feel like they didn't come on here to be okay. They didn't come on this show to heal. I don't understand what they came on this show for. Because from the gate, everybody was not being true to themselves. When she asked questions, she was not getting any definitive answers. This lady ain't know this girl was going to go crazy on her by her trying to pull an exercise that she felt would be beneficial to this girl on her. And I don't feel like after she said, you don't have to stay if you don't want to, then you should, what, was, what did the girl go off of? Because she felt like somebody was controlling and taking something away from her yet again. That's why, which leads us to the problem. Her problem is she ain't all right with what happened with her. She torn, in my opinion. She torn like hell. Because over here on the right side is this family that I never knew. This woman over here gave birth to me. I, I should have had an opportunity to know who this woman is. I, I, I feel like I need to. But over here on this side, here's the woman that did stay. Well, not necessarily stay. This is the woman that kidnapped me. This is the one that loved me. And I don't know if they had a good life. I mean, apparently so. You know, I think she did okay for her. I, I don't know. All I know is I my my thoughts keep going back to that girl because she's so angry. She is so angry and she has every right to be angry. But my concern is is anybody around her really caring about the fact that she ain't processing this shit well. That anger came from somewhere. Now, some of it could be from the life she had prior to finding out about her biological family and mixed in with what she's learning now about her biological family. I really don't know. All I know is the world ain't going to understand that Kamaya Mobley was stolen at 18 and raised by another woman only to find her family, her true family at age 18 and trying to rebuild with, you know, build a relationship because you can't go back and the bond, if it's ever going to be one, it's going to be from an adult standpoint because she's no longer a child. So, my point about that was you can't pop off, baby. You're going to have to learn how to deal with your anger and and you ain't been doing it because you told Ayana you pop you pop old bitches like her all the time for less than what Ayana did to you in your eyes. The world not gonna give a damn, nor will they show mercy or compassion for what you've been through and let you just roam free and roll all over people. He do what I say do. That's what she said about her daddy. And you know why she said that? Because that's exactly how the hell they live in their life. She's telling her parents, her bio parents, what the fuck she want to do. Her and mama clashing because she's still loving and won't hear nothing bad about this lady that forever changed her life. Because that's who she know to be her mother. This other woman. I hear y'all say this my mama, but uh, I don't know her. And as long as she probably not feeling my real mama, I ain't feeling her. It's it's just a very, this is one of the most complex stories I have ever seen play out on TV in an hour. I, it was just really complex. And like I said, it left me with a lot of emotion, y'all. Just, I'm just, you see how conflicted I am in this video? And the purpose of the video is to share this, share what I'm going through, what I'm experiencing uh, process and what I saw and to give you all a chance who may still be where I'm at on Monday from a show we saw Saturday night a chance to get down into the panic section and share your thoughts and opinion this ain't about who's right and who's wrong so I'm not looking for you to agree with me I just want to hear what you gotta say about it and at the end of the day 
everybody that read the comments, we all going to be able to process it, however we process it. And it may help some of us, like me, who may not be seeing the, another side of it, to see another side by you getting down in the panty section and telling me what you think about this. That shit just really had bothered me, y'all. Because I worry about... I can't worry about that mama that's in jail because, girl, you you took somebody's child. I hope that they take into consideration how well of a parent she was to the girl. I mean, I probably ain't, but, I mean, I I don't, you committed a crime, you got to go do the time. You destroyed somebody's lives, child. You got to go to jail. But I'm worried more about that girl, Kamaya, because, hmm. It's like Kamaya fighting to be Alexis again. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. That was deep. That was really deep. And I appreciate it, Yana. She might even get a view from me for the rest of this season. Because what she showed me was that everybody can't be fixed in in one hour with commercials, which leads us to about maybe 50 minutes of a TV show. Everybody can't be fixed, but you can learn something about yourself and take it up on yourself to either get the help you need for it or to modify that that, that is whatever that is that's inside of you that needs to be modified. That's what I got out of Iana Fix My Life. And I have a very different outlook on the show and her now because I understand that she's not on here bragging about she can fix the shit. She just in here trying to help people understand where they broken it and go to that hurtful place and deal with that hurt because your true salvation starts with the healing of that hurt. You got to recognize the deal with it. Then you'll be all right. Anyway, I didn't talk for 30 minutes, y'all. I wasn't expecting to talk this long. And this might be one of the most craziest damn videos that y'all probably ever get from me. I know y'all like, bitch, you was all over the place. Yes, I was. I told you in the beginning, I'm very conflicted. And the video ain't to sum it all up. It's just to share how I feel and let you get down in the panty and share with me what you thinking about it. Because that was, that was, a, that was a very deep... That was a deep episode, y'all. That was deep. And I thank Iana for it because it made me it made me understand her better as a um person who do this show and it had me it made me really interested in the process to where she goes. Cause I, I always be trying to say I always tell y'all all the time, if I can't add to your life, I don't wanna take nothing away. And I think that's the same thing Iana feel when she do this show. Of course it's a cash thing for her. Why wouldn't it be? But you got to have a compassionate heart and you got to have a desire to see people better to be able to do what she do season after season. Anyway, I got a whole level of respect for that chick I ain't have at first, so I ain't got nothing bad to say about Miss Iyana Benson. I don't give a damn if she do practice voodoo in the basement while smoking Newport 100s. The bitch all right with me. Y'all let me know down in the panel what y'all think about uh, Saturday Night episode and which y'all like me to continue to talk about Miss Iyana because like she done got me all the way to and gather and I might want to talk about home Saturday. So if I feel like doing that, would y'all be respectful? Receptive to coming down and watching the video and sharing your thoughts and opinions with me without us having the moments like we had when I was doing the Queen's Court with Kaya and, and T.S. Man, I don't want to do that with y'all. I don't want to do that with y'all. I really don't. I, I, I don't mind opposing opinions. I just ain't with that bullshit because, I, I mean, this is me and I ain't for the change, but y'all also have seen the other crazy side of me too. So, you know. Y'all let me know what y'all thinking. That that episode was deep, bitch. This, that, that was good. That's good TV, bitch. Oh, I don't think I could ever invite the cameras into my life like that. For one, like I told you, I like control. And that would put me totally out of control. Because I don't know. I can control me to a certain degree. But I can't control. Oh, bitch, no. Anyway, y'all, let me get on about it here. Remember, the depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video wherever you can share videos. I, I know I ain't did growing up hip-hop ATL. I'm on my way now. Peace.